Hello, welcome to Joycey Draws Lauren. I'm using a piece of tan Canson paper to start. I've got my vine charcoal. I've got charcoal pencil white, a black hard, and a black soft. My sandpaper board. Blending sticks. Um, pencil erasers and drawing brush. I'm ready to start. I have a good picture of Lauren. She's lit well. I'm going to do um, a black and white on the tan so it's a three-tone drawing. Sometimes these are called tonal separations. As you can see I have divided the face up according to my previous lessons. I am starting with the eyes. Brows go over that line. I have checked Lauren's proportions. The triangle between the pupils and the bottom of the nose is tr very true in her case. Now I'm making the lips they are coming down from the middle of the pupil. I'm doing a lot of this with a charcoal pencil. Now I use my chamois to wipe off the vine. I'm using vine again here for some facial shading. Um, a chamois is really nice to have. Um, if it's not actually leather, you can wash it in the washing machine, which is a really nice thing to do if you use it a lot. Now I'm just using hatching strokes and my fingers on a lot of this for blending. Now time to go back in the eyes and start putting in the deep shades and marks with my black uh, charcoal pencil. She has light color eyes, although the way she's glancing off to the left uh, her eyes actually look darker than what they really are. I'm trying to get her very unique eye shape in. Now I'm going to start configuring the nose a bit and detailing some of the shadows there. There is a nice shadow on the left side of her face from the nose. I want to make sure I catch that. Now notice that I'm going over the charcoal vine work with the charcoal pencil. And remember charcoal pencil is always going to be a, a lot darker than the vine. So you'll have two different things to work with. I actually do like putting the vine down first and then erasing some of it and blending some of it and then attacking it with the charcoal pencil. So as you can see, I'm working on all the shadowed areas, the darker lines, darker areas. What I'll be doing in a minute though, after I finish some of this, I will be taking the white charcoal pencil and putting in some highlights. Shadow under the eyes. If you have a really good photograph that's high resolution, say 300 dpi, and the lighting is good, you'll be good to go uh, working on a self-portrait or a portrait of another person. If your photo is not descriptive in terms of sharpness and great lighting, there's no way you're going to get a really great portrait out of that. So spend your time trying to get the most ideal uh, photo you can, or if you're really lucky, have the live model sit in front of you, put the lighting on the model, make sure it looks good, and then start working. 
Now, for many of you, this will be your first real portrait study with shading. So, for sure, it's easier to work from a photograph. You may not get the whole experience that you normally would from a model, but there's a lot of value in working from a photograph. You are getting comfortable with the proportions. You're learning about the shading, highlighting, the textures on the face, how to do hair. Okay, I'm using a mechanical eraser to get the highlights into her eyes. A little bit of erasing, blending. Now here goes the white. I want you to notice how highlighted the white of the eyes are looking with just that little bit of charcoal white. In photographs, photographs will portray the white areas, uh, charcoal areas, very brightly. So you have to be a little bit sparing the way you use it. Now I'm going into the nose with some of the highlights. I'm careful that I only put the white over areas that are clean of the black charcoal. Because if I put white over a black charcoal area, it immediately turns to gray and it wouldn't look good. Now what you can do, after you get your shadows down, you think they look good, give them a spray with a fixative and then you won't have that problem of the white mixing with the black and creating gray. I'm not spraying mine at all yet, so I'm trying to separate those white areas with the blacker areas and the darker areas. Even a little bit of the charcoal line will mix readily with, with the white. So I'm trying to catch some of the highlights. I'm leaving actually a lot of textural drawing marks right now. Later, I will polish those up a little bit and take a formal picture with my SLR camera, make sure I get a good high quality. Now I'm using a charcoal vine to start formulating her hair. She has brown hair that is highlighted and naturally curly. So I'm using the side of this charcoal vine to try to capture some of her curls and areas that are darker. I will take a blending stick now and going with the flow of the hair, smooth out the areas. This part can go really fast. Curly hair is definitely harder to do than straight hair. Long hair is harder to do than short hair. So what I'm doing is I lay down a base ground of the charcoal, or not, the um, charcoal vine. I'm using an eraser now to pull out some of her highlights. The paper's just dark enough where I don't think I'm going to put a bunch of uh, white charcoal pencil highlights in her hair. I don't think I need to, but I shadow there of that little uh, tendril. I'm going in with a charcoal black and I'm articulating some of the singular strands. Not everything but just sort of getting it organized and balancing out the tones of the dark, balancing out tones of white so that it all makes sense. And the eye reads it in a pleasant way. Okay, here's my photo of the finish. Uh, I think it looks like her. I could have put more detail in the hair, but I like it the way it is, just sort of fresh and more spontaneous. And this would look good on a blue Canson paper, a green, a tan. Uh, it's harder to do this tonal separation on a very light Canson or a very dark Canson. Bye.